There once was a very smart, very brave, very beautiful young princess. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and this very smart, very brave, very beautiful young princess once met a very handsome young prince. Oh, <laughs> nice to meet you. Mm. <laughs> she decided she wanted to get to know the prince better, so she invited him to her castle to play a little croquet. And this one day, as they were playing croquet, right in between the third and the fourth wicket, someone else came, someone uninvited, a fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> and the dragon, he smashed down the castle, he burned up everything in sight, he knocked over the princess, he grabbed the prince, and he ran off. The princess, she couldn't believe it. Her castle was destroyed, her clothes were burned, her crown had got knocked off and was missing some of the jewels. She wasn't going to take this line down. She got her mangled up crown, put it on top of her head, and she headed off after the prince and after the dragon. Well, the dragon's path was easy to follow that day. It had smashed down bridges and burned up villages, coughed up these cow and chicken bones on the side of the path. She followed it all the way up to the dragon's lair. It was a cave with a big wooden door on it. The dragon opened the door, took one look at the princess with her burned up clothes and her mangled up crown. I don't have time for wannabe princesses. Come back when you're the real thing. I wannabe princess? Who does he? She tried again. <clears throat> the dragon opened up the door. I thought I told you to beat it. What do you want? Well, you're right. Dragon, I am a wannabe princess. My problem is that I don't have a real dragon. My dragon is all tired and washed up. He's no good for nothing. He can't even breathe a lick of flames. Well, I see your problem there, wannabe. You can't be a real princess without a real dragon. But what's that got to do with me? Well, I've asked all my friends, and they always they tell me that you're the best dragon there is. Oh, is that what they say about me? <laughs> well, I knew I was a good dragon. I didn't realize I was the best dragon. But it doesn't surprise me, you know. Yeah, well, they tell me that you can fly all over the world in 10 seconds flat. I said, nobody can do that. And they said, yeah, you can. I said, nobody can. And they said, yeah, you can. And the dragon said, well, yeah, I'll have to say you, friends. He's right. <laughs> you got a stopwatch on? Ready, set, go. And he took off, and he came back in 9.9 .9 seconds flat with a panda bear all the way from China, a kangaroo all the way from Australia, and this big Texas longhorn steer. <laughs> But the princess, she said, oh, well, yeah, you're pretty fast, but uh, it's not like you went to the moon or anything. Well, I didn't go to the moon. You didn't ask me to go to the moon. I could go to the moon. Just watch, don't, don't time me this time. It might take, I'll be right back. And he took off. And sure enough, boom, he came back with a stone from the moon. He gave it to the princess. She put it in her crown. Wow. Yeah, you know what? My friends also told me that you can burn down a whole cornfield with just one single breath. But I said, nobody can do that. And they said, yeah, he can. And I said, nobody can. And they said, yeah, he can. And the dragon said, well, yeah, your friend is right again. i got to say, I can do that. You just watch this here. And he took this big breath and <laughs> this river of flames came flowing out of his mouth. And he burned down the whole cornfield. But the princess, she said, oh, well... You burned it down. It wasn't a very big one, but I guess that counts, okay. Well, I'm going to burn down a cornfield, but just step aside here. We don't want you to get hurt. And he took this bigger breath, and <laughs> this bigger river of flames came flowing out of his mouth, and he burned down the next cornfield, <laughs> and the next cornfield beyond that, <laughs> and the next cornfield beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> well, say, princess, Oh, dragon, you are the dragon for me. What do you say? Well, if you be my dragon, then I'll be a real princess. Pretty please. Well, I don't know. I guess I got some free time coming up here. Yeah, I could probably take on one more princess. All right, I'm going to go into my lair here. I'll work out the contracts. I'll be right back out, all right? You wait right here. And so the dragon went into his lair, and the princess waited outside. But after just a minute, of being outside, she heard this big <laughs> dragon. Are you okay? 
No answer. So she went inside the dragon's lair. And she saw the dragon. He was laid out flat, snoring away. She had tired it out by making it fly all over the place and burn down all those cornfields. Now she knew you can't wake a dragon up once it starts sleeping, but she wanted to play it safe. Hello, dragon. Nothing. So she went up to that dragon. She lifted up his big floppy ear. Hey, dragon! <laughs> I tired you out, and now I'm going to go get my prince. She went over to the cell where the prince had been locked. She opened it up. Prince, I'm here to take you home. Well, princess, your clothes are all burned. Your crown has a funny rock in it, and <laughs> you smell like burnt corn. <laughs> I can't go anywhere with you dressed like that. Why don't you come back when you're dressed like a real princess, hmm? And Prince, here you are after being drugged all over the place by a dragon and locked in the cell all day. Your clothes are perfect. Your hair is not a hair out of place. You smell like the finest cologne. You look like a prince, but you sure don't act like one. Why don't you stay here until you can? The princess, she went back to her kingdom. She had her castle built up again. She got some new clothes. She kept the rock in her crown. She liked the way that looked. But she never, ever went back for the prince. Thank you. Thanks.